to the Angel Mystic Podcast. I am super excited you are listening because this is where spiritually open minds can come together to explore the wonders of angels, spiritual connections and the art of manifesting. Hosted by me, Amanda Took, the Angel Mystic, your spiritual midwife to help you on your journey to a fulfilling and happy life. You may have seen me on ITV, Channel 4 or even in Fate and Fortune magazine. In each episode, we will delve into the mystical world of angels, offering you insights, guidance, practical tools to deepen your connection with the upstairs so that you can find inner peace, happiness, joy, and create the life that you want. Tune in for weekly fun conversations, transformational insights that will elevate your spiritual journey and awaken your inner mystic. Please hit subscribe now as we embark on a transformational adventure with the Angel Mystic Podcast. Welcome back to the Angel Mystic Podcast. And today I've got a really exciting guest. Um, This is a lady that I have known for years. I'm not sure how many years. And we affectionately call each other twins because our lives seem to run really parallel. So welcome, Joanna. I am so glad you've come and joined us. You are known as Joanna Hunter and you are a business queen with a spiritual aspect, aren't you? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Amanda, for such a lovely um, introduction there. I'm so happy to be on your podcast. Uh, Yes, I love spiritual business and helping other spiritual business owners win at life and business so yeah and we definitely have got so many parallels to our lives <laughs> I know it is bonkers um we met oh, I don't know how many years ago it is because we were both um part of Den- Denise Duffield Thomas's world weren't we that's um, right yeah still are. so we met back then and I have watched your life unfold and seeing what you've done and put your stamp on this world. And you are doing amazing stuff. I love seeing how you're supporting other people becoming spiritual entrepreneurs um, and building a business that's really authentic and fulfills the soul. Um, It's it's a joy to see you doing so well with it. Oh, thank you. Yeah, I think we've inspired each other through that group, to be quite honest. Um, I've seen you skyrocket and you unfold amazing marvelous things and and uh, I've often uh, looked at some of the wins that you post and think yes that's for me as well and it's inspired me as well in my journey so yeah I think we've maybe managed to inspire each other yeah. um and I think it is it's so important to run a business if you're running a spiritual business or you're sitting here listening to this podcast thinking about starting a spiritual business I really think that it's so important that it's soul aligned, you know, because if you're going to be your own boss, you might as well do it through soul alignment as opposed to what the world wants or market research or those kind of things. Yeah, they come later, but the most important piece is your own energy. Yeah, absolutely. I think so many people chase the money rather than chasing the passion. And that's mm. when it's hard, isn't it? When people are you know, really struggling with business and all they're doing is chasing the sale. And it's not about the sale, it's about the serving, isn't it? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, in one of my um, business courses, we create a financial goal, but we turn that financial goal into what we call a service goal so that you don't have to focus about the money. You can focus, you can still hit your financial goals, but you focus on how many people you need to serve which gets most spiritual entrepreneurs way more excited than let's make a 10K month or let's, you know, do a six-figure year or more. It gets people really, really excited, this idea that let's serve 20 people this month and, like, really serve them well. Mm, yeah. And a lot of people get much more excited and activated by that in my world and communities. And this is one of the things that I find is – that when people go to kind of non-spiritual business coaches, when you are spiritual, um, and the emphasis is very much on what I call the physical world stuff. So success is me- measured by mon- money. In my world, success is measured through a number of different things, including the impact that we're making. Yeah, 
Yeah. So actually was going to one of the things I was going to ask you is that, you know, how do you measure success or progress in your spiritual business? But I think you just answered that. Yeah, I I mean, there's a variety of ways of doing it. Obviously, money is just one of them. And it, I, for me, honestly, it's not the highest on my priority. I think um, traditional ones like is your social media growing? Are you reaching people? Um, but I think also as well that it takes a lot nowadays in this very, very busy world for people to sit down and say, thank you for this. Or um, I just wanted to let you know that your work is impacting me. And I I feel that that is like your top tier compliment when somebody actually took the time out of their busy life, out of their busy day to write to you and say, thank you so much for the work that you do. Thank you so much for what you're putting out there in the world. And I think that's a really, really good indication of beginning to create energetic success. And the energetic success is the precursor to the material success. So if you're generating energetic success, you know, it's a hop, skip and a jump before you start generating material success as well. Do you find that hard to receive? Because I'm I'm saying that because I find it hard to receive. And, and in a way, that's an advantage and a disadvantage. So when you get lovely feedback and compliments and people send you messages saying, oh, you've really helped me. Thank you so much. And all of that. Um, I'm almost like I don't fully receive it. I, I find it hard to fully receive. But equally on the back of that, when you get somebody that isn't happy and people like to complain, and you know you might get a negative comment equally that washes over me too and okay um you know there's sort of almost like a balance with it all so but I think I don't fully hear and be aware of my impact on other people um I think a lot of spiritual entrepreneurs struggle with this and I think that what we we think that receiving you know if you look at the law of attraction for instance ask believe receive Right. The hardest step is not the belief. The hardest step is not getting clear on what it is that you want so that you can ask clearly. The hardest step is actually receiving. And it's not because the universe is not delivering. It is because we find it difficult to actually receive in. And so it, understanding that receiving is a spiritual practice. And it's something that we actually need to practice. And in the early days when people wrote lovely things, I could feel my own energy shrinking. Oh, but they're just writing, you know, I would make stories up. I, oh, but they're just writing that just to be nice and, and they don't really mean it. And like, they took time out of their day. They sat their butt down and they were literally, you know, wh why would anybody do that for any other reason other than this is how I feel? And so... For me, it became, became a practice of really sitting and really allowing myself to accept in. And for me, what that did was it increased my capacity for what I could receive. And so it became a spiritual pa practice. And actually, when I, I, I worked with it, I actually created a little mini course called The Magic of Receiving, which is literally all of the spiritual practices that I developed to allow myself to be a good receiver. And I would definitely say that that was essential for me to not only be able to receive in the utterly beautiful comments that we get on a weekly and daily basis, here um at be magic hq but also as well to be able to receive in more money financially as well for the work yeah so yeah it was it was quite um it's been quite a journey for me the receiving part um and realizing that it was a spiritual practice that along with rest is a spiritual practice well if you're going too fast you you can't receive as in you can't receive your guidance can you no and I get so excited about my work so I want to do it forever in a day and then realizing the physical body isn't fit for that you know that you can't work nobody can work 24 7 forever in a day so I think it's understanding that these things like receiving like rest these are all spiritual practices that need to be practiced just like you go to your meditation pillow maybe every single day 
you've also got to make the space and the time for these practices too. Mm, definitely. You talk about the light web, don't you? Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit more about that? So <laughs> the light web was something that really felt like it happened to me. And I very much believe in life that life is happening for us. But the the light web was something that was unexpected and yet expected. So back in 2016, I could feel I've always had this massive awareness of spirit and always been a psychic medium for you know as long as I can remember. And I I felt something on the periphery of my consciousness. As I put my energy out, I could literally feel it sort of at the edge of the consciousness. And whatever it was, I could not see the sides of this thing. It was massive. It was huge. And I and I had no idea what it was. And so my spirit team, Skylar, which is a collective consciousness that I channel, they, they teach, they have this teaching that sometimes we don't receive something because we don't have the container for it to go into. Yeah. And so I thought, okay, if this thing is on the edge of my consciousness, I'll create a container to hopefully begin to pour that in. And I created the Be Magic Mastermind. And what first arrived was 13 Be Magic Insights. And these insights are tiny little short insights, but they are like packets of energy. And once you begin working with them, they begin to like really, really majorly unfold. Once those 13 insights were through, and I had shared them with my mastermind clients and I had started to share them in my communities. I It kind of sold the, the field, if you like, for being able to hold what then came next, which was the light web. So the light web was probably one of the weirdest kind of spiritual experiences that I've ever had. Um, I was sitting in my office as I do many mornings meditating mm -hmm. but on this particular morning it felt like somebody literally put their hand through my physical body in my chest and like lift lifted me up out of my body um out of my chest and like the next thing I was in like very it was like Star Trek it was like these corridors of light and I was thinking, oh, my God. And at that time, I had a real aversion to anything that was like galactic or alien or anything like that. So I'm like, no alien shit, no alien shit. You know, this is what, what I'm saying. And I like I don't dare to look either side of me because what I realize is that these streams of light are actually stars. And I'm thinking, oh, my Lord, where are you taking me? And only because I trust my spirit team so much and because I've worked with them for my whole life was I able to kind of stay calm because otherwise at this point in time I would have been completely freaking out. So I arrive at this place and I can see I'm somewhere galactic and I'm thinking, oh my God, you know, do not do this to me. And then Archangel Metatron oh. appeared and I got blasted with the brightest light I've ever felt and in that moment I felt like I ceased to exist that everything that made me me was being literally systematically destroyed and it was terrifying and I didn't know if I would I, I didn't know it was actually to the point where I was like is my husband going to find my body because I I I thought this is it. This is it. I'm I'm literally going to die. And then as soon as that had started, it stopped. And and then when it stopped, um this kind of um crystal liquid began rebuilding me. And I thought, okay, this is different. And and I was just sort of stood there and and Archangel Metatron was there and my spirit team Skylar and I and I was like and I was just kind of like quite frozen at the whole process and then um once I realized it was kind of over I was like what the hell was that which is very eloquent but it was the only words I could think of at the time and um and Skylar says to me well you've been reactivated into the light web 
and you are now to teach this to the peoples of earth and I was like oh okay and I was like well what what is it and um and they said well it's kind of like the internet for the soul I thought okay <laughs> this is different so what like google you know and they said well you can ask it anything you're you're now um activated into this grid of consciousness and you can ask anything so the first question i asked of the light web was how was the pyramids built and the answers were absolutely mind blowing so um and and i was able to ask a lot of questions and i and the answers just appeared in my mind as though i had already always known them and they just kept coming so thick and fast. And I was like, wow. Um, and then um, as that kind of moment in time was coming to an end, um, and I I had sort of <laughs> taken it for a trial run, and I thought, well, I don't really know what this whole thing is, but this is you're the high priestess of the light web, and, and it's your, you know, sacred duty now to begin to teach this to the peoples of earth and um and so I came back and I knew something massive and something really really profound had happened to me and as I began exploring the light web I went back to my spirit team and I said I can't I can't teach this because I realized that what light web does is that because there's a law a universal law here in the world called the law of duality for every energy, there is an equal and opposite energy. So right now, a lot of people are experiencing that law of duality because they're seeing a lot of darkness. There's a lot of war in the world. There's a lot of things. The reason why there is so much darkness in the world right now is because the light is increasing. But for every energy, there is an equal and opposite energy. So as we increase the light, the dark also increases. So sometimes when we see the darkness, we think, Oh my goodness. So I realized that what light web ultimately does is it increases the capacity for light that someone can hold. And I went back to Skylar and I said, I can't teach this because I understand its application and I understand what it would do for a human being. But the human part of them, if they are not supported in this, it could go either way. They could either end up further down the rabbit hole of the darkness and I said and I will not be responsible for that or they could end up further down the rabbit hole of light um and which is great which is obviously your guy's agenda but I said we're human here and we're subject to this law of duality and I said I won't do that to human being you have to give me something if you want me to teach this you have to give me something for the human being to support the human aspect of us so that we can stay in that choice of choosing the light again and again and again so the next thing that I received was a total download called the 333 Magic Framework. Three insights for your soul, three concepts for your mind, and three steps for your physical body. And it's probably one of the greatest things I've ever downloaded in my life. It's incredible. And it is so game-changing and life-changing. And alongside LightWeb, it takes a human being from their human operating system, which is, I think, and I question, and it transports a human being from that thinking and question through life, which on the surface, if you do not know anything other than that, thinking and questioning sounds like a good plan for a human being. It sounds like this is a great plan. Like, this is smart. It's smart to think and question in your life. And I absolutely do not argue with that. But... You move a human from their human operating system into their soul's operating system, which is I know, and therefore your response becomes I trust. And you can feel in your energy system immediately. Try it. Sit down, put your hand in your heart, say I think and I question. You can feel that there's a, a slight agitation in your energy system. It's getting primed. It's ready to go. Like, let me, give me the data so I can think and I can question. When you say I know and I trust it's like a leaning back into your own energy and that's what happens to our students um and so when I first launched a light web it was quite hilarious um because I 
I didn't know really what it really was. And and um and I had this amazing framework that I knew that I could teach people and I felt really confident in teaching that framework. Um, but I got on and honestly, I don't even know how anybody said yes to it, but 20 people said yes straight away and jumped into Lightweb in that first round. And people, even now, you know, six years later, even now people are like, I feel called to this. This is something that has called me. Um, as the years have gone on and by, I have obviously um, taught this many, many times now. And I fully, fully understand it. And I also understand um, it was removed from Earth and then it was returned to Earth again as a technology. It is actually a communication system between all things with energy. So that's pretty much everything. It's how our galactic friends, I'm not no longer am I on that page of like no alien stuff, but um, it's how our galactic friends travel and it's how they communicate. Yeah. Absolutely. planetary communication yeah that that is fascinating to hear and as you were talking I'm, I'm super excited that you mentioned metatron because obviously i'm all about the angels and metatron is my favorite archangel incredibly powerful archangel um do you think you had some interaction with his cube absolutely i mean um so after I did my thing, they said I was the high priestess of the light web. I am. I do not like fancy titles. So I said, no, that's never going to happen. I'm never going to call myself the high priestess of light web. So if you go to my social media, you will see that I do actually call myself that now. So what changed? I realized Skylar has this beautiful teaching that is either you own the energy or the energy owns you. And what I realized was that I... I wasn't owning that that's the station that I had been given, um, which meant that I was shrinking away from that, mm. which meant that the energy was owning me. And I didn't like the idea of that. So I began working with a kinesiologist and I worked with a kinesiologist for over a year. And during that year, we unfolded this extraordinary story of my soul that um, my father in uh, a past life, had been the god Toth. The god Toth is also Hermes, the Greek god, but he is also the biblical um, prophet Enoch, and therefore Enoch ascended into heaven and became Archangel Metatron. So they're all the same person, and Paul the Venetian and Saint Germain, who brought the violet flame, are also aspects of this one energy, this one entity, this one energy. And so what I realized was that Lightweb was on Earth. It was actually me or my soul that actually removed it when I began seeing it being abused. So I removed it, encoded it into my soul for a time when humanity was ready for it again. And then I, I was murdered in that lifetime. In that lifetime, I was the high priestess of the Temple of Hathor, and I realized in that lifetime, and, and I had a human mother and a, an Egyptian god was my father in that lifetime. And it was this extraordinary story. What was so extraordinary was doing this with a kinesiologist and the kinesiologist saying, oh, my God, your body is muscle testing as this story is 100 percent true. And anybody that knows anything about kinesiology is a very accurate system. And so this story was just spilling out of me of how this had happened. And so in a way, I actually see my, I actually see Archangel Metronon as kind of my spiritual father. And so um, it was not the first time that I'd met him. I'd met him on many, many occasions. And um, I'd always felt a very strong kinship. After going through the kinesiology, I realized it's because I see him almost as a father figure. And it was a, a really beautiful um, thing. My actual father in this life, we didn't have a great relationship, but he was actually born in St. Germain in Cornwall. The synchronicities of that I have with this energy that has been tough, that has been, a, as a, a young woman, when I was you know really young a girl, I was obsessed with Egypt. Like every school project, what's Joanna doing it on? Oh, ancient Egypt. 
that's because that's all I wanted to do it on. I wanted to do it on the Egyptian gods. I wanted to. Um, so I was absolutely obsessed with things like that. And the correlation as my life has unfolded and then the story came out through the kinesiology was just unreal. And so I definitely feel, you know, the the technology of LightWeb is a um it is a it's a grid of light. And if you imagine little nodes, every human being has their own node. And um and that node is connected to all the other nodes. And so when we activate somebody into light web, we're activating them into a level of consciousness of where they can begin to perceive their light web node. Even the activation thing I had a problem with. Um, I had a problem with the activation thing because I was like, I have always had this idea that you don't need someone else between you and the divine. And so anytime that anybody offers things like activations and stuff like that, I'd always been, I had to grow so much as a person just to hold the energy of light web because I'd always been like wide birth. Nope, don't need that because I've always had this very strong belief between myself and the divine that you don't need anything else between it. And, and I still hold that belief to a certain degree the way that Skylar explained LightWeb to me was that LightWeb is a technology that has not been on Earth for thousands and thousands of years. And therefore, there is no memory of it in the collective consciousness any longer. And so the activation is really just to reactivate the memory of LightWeb so that we can get there ourselves. And there will come a point where we have activated so many people into LightWeb. At the moment, we're coming up for 400 people being activated into LightWeb um, because I also trained a LightWeb priestesses to begin to be able to disseminate this work and this body of work. And so now what's happened as a result of that is there will come a point where there are so many people in the world that are light web activated that light web will become a common knowledge within anybody who would be able to enter it. At the moment, we're not there yet because it's not saturated the consciousness enough. Uh, but even that was, you know, I had to kind of like, I had a lot of my own beliefs that I had to face in the journey of, of stepping into that role of high priestess of light web. And I really feel like this is an important part in Earth's history as well of being able to make that galactic, that leap into our planet being, because a lot of the belief systems on our planet is that we are the singular planet. A lot of people believe that this is it, we're it for life and the universe. And the ridiculousness of that is beyond, you know, even scientifically, the ridiculousness of that is you know, they they basically believe that every star that you see in the heavens, which of course there's thousands and thousands, every third star has an M-class planet, which is basically a planet that's like Earth and can sustain life. So the chances are that we are alone in this vastness of space is slim to none. Um but this idea that we're interconnected and the information that I've received from the light web has been really, really mind blowing. Um, lots of information on on basically Earth's status, if you like, of like how we're progressing and how we are moving into higher ascension. Ascension, um, according to light web, is when we take our place within the galactic community right now we are an isolated planet and we're um we're insular and once we have that ascension and consciousness rises to a certain level of awareness we will become aware of the galactic community and that is something that's very very exciting because we're at this time in the world where we're about to step into that next level and that and that's one of the you know that's one of the reasons why I support other spiritual business owners and give them a toolbox that's body mind and spirit it's not just 
here's the strategy, go do, because that doesn't work for spiritual business owners because our energy is everything. And our energy also contains what I call soul codes. So you have been encoded in your DNA, in your soul to bring a message as a midwife of the ascension, as a midwife of consciousness, as a midwife of bringing this higher consciousness forward and through. And so you need support in all areas. You can't just give you the strategy and wind you up and set you off on your road. You need energetic support. You need mental and spiritual support in order to be able to hold the vastness of what has been kind of packed inside a person who is called to help humanity. I all This is fascinating, and I love our conversations that we have. Um, there's two questions that are sort of coming to mind at the moment with you. And obviously, I have my favorite places to connect. You've talked about this amazing journey that you've been on and how you receive all your information, your downloads and stuff. And one of my favorite places to connect and get downloads is within water. So when I'm swimming, when I'm in the shower, when I'm in my hot tub, love those sorts of places. Do you have a favorite place that you connect and get downloads? I have a favorite time. Um, not really a place um because for me downloads happen whenever wherever but my favorite time is in the mornings but I always make time for spirit in the mornings and I am very blessed with a super supportive partner and so he even though we have children and two of our children are older but our youngest is 14 um you know he is always kind of being the primary caregiver in the morning so that I can have that mental space and that has been one of my favorite places and times in the morning like I sit and get ready very leisurely and as I'm sitting getting ready in the morning um ideas and things come through and that's the time where I often sit and have back and forth conversations with my spirit team or um you know or maybe they inform me of new energies that are coming in on onto the earth grids or they um when I, you know, I've spent the last nine years literally unfolding an entire divine feminine mystery school for spiritual entrepreneurs. And so that's when those courses and everything, everything that I have, everything that I teach has all been downloaded from spirit. And so everything comes through that way. Mm. And so the morning is my sort of really special time. Um, and it's it's a time that, you know, I very much look forward to it. Um, and I love the leisurely pace of my mornings, which I know is not suitable for everyone. Walter is another. I have a very huge affinity with Walter as well. I absolutely love Walter. So part of my logo is a downward facing triangle. Um, and I always think it's quite funny because symbology is an ancient art form. A triangle itself is geometry um, and it matters. And I see all these, so many spiritual entrepreneurs with an upward facing triangle and it really, and especially feminine entrepreneurs and it really kind of makes me giggle a little bit um, because a downward facing triangle is known as the chalice, which is the feminine womb and the shape of the womb. So it's feminine, but the alchemic symbol of a downward facing triangle is water. So it's it's basically in water, the womb, our life. So it's a symbol for life and it's a symbol for flow and the flow of life. And so I have incorporated that symbol into my logo but a lot of feminine spiritual entrepreneurs use an upward facing triangle, which looks like a big pyramid. The pyramid is actually, or that shape is actually a phallus and the it's a masculine energy um, because water is a feminine um, energy and the upward facing triangle is masculine and it represents the phallus and it represents the element of fire. So it's literally a fire dick, which always gives me the maddest giggles because <laughs> you got all these lovely, very soft ladies using this in their logos and things. And I'm like, 
the symbology of that. I don't know, could work, but interesting. <laughs> Sure. I don't think that was the message that you were hoping for, <laughs> you know, and I always think it's quite funny because a lot of people, you know, a lot of these ancient symbols that we see regularly every single day and we don't think much about them, even the elements and stuff like that, things like that are not taught in schools, for instance, that the elements have masculine and feminine attributes. So fire, for instance, and air are masculine, feminine is earth and water. And if you think about it, earth and water combined creates life, right? Um, and and if you put air and fire together, you get an raging inferno, which creates destruction. Wow. Never looked at that before, but that's really interesting, Joanna. Yeah, so it's it's really I love I love symbology. It's something that I really love. And um, you know, in some of my classes, I've taught things like sigils and stuff like that, which is really fun. Yeah, definitely. One of the things I really love is obviously angels, as you know, and mm -hmm. I know that you think of angels making a really good, fantastic business partner. I think of them as like your free VA in business because there's so yes. much they can help you with. You use angels in your business as well, don't you? All the time. I, I mean... I and the funny thing is that I almost find the things that I resist the most like the galactic stuff but I also resisted angels to start with I thought it was very I, I thought it was I thought it was very namdy pamdy and I was like I don't know you know and then I began working with angels yeah and I I completely ch changed my mind on that and now I couldn't imagine my life without the angels. I couldn't imagine my life with, and I used to, when I started life coaching, a lot of my life coaching clients back in the early days, back in around about 2011, a lot of my very early life coaching clients, they were more kind of the muggle. <laughs> they didn't come from the spiritual world. They were much more straight laced and work normal jobs and things and I remember always introducing angels to them and I always used to say to them listen I've got this thing for you it might sound a little bit off the wall but here's what I want you to do and I said I want you to sit and I want you to light a candle and I want you to write a note to your angels for what it is that you need in your life whatever it is whether it's the love of your life or whether it's something that you want. And I said, I want you to fold that note and slide it underneath the candle and then light the candle. And then I want you to take 10 minutes to just sit and watch the candle and just allow yourself to relax. And just imagine asking in your head for what you had written on your note. So, you know, imagine asking, here's what I really need. You know, if you have human needs, for instance, and you need some more money, then, then ask the angels for that. And I said, and here's how you can't lose with this, you know, because some of them would look at me and they'd be quite skeptic and they'd be like, well, what's, she, what's this weirdo trying to get me to do, you know? And I said, listen, you're worried about this right now in your life. You're you're upset about it. So here's how you cannot lose doing this. I said, you do the candle, you chill out for 10 minutes and nothing happens. It was 10 minutes that you didn't worry that's got to be a win, right? Because you could be worried 24-7, but 10 minutes of that 24-7, you didn't worry. So I said, you've already, you're already up. I said, but the second scenario is that the angels are real and they can hear you. And you inviting them to your party is all the nudge that they needed to help sort that problem for you. So people were like, okay. Well, I'll give it a go because I can't lose, right? Either I'm going to have 10 minutes of deep relaxation or the angels answer my request and I got the 10 minutes of deep relaxation. 10 minutes, I wasn't worried about the thing. Every single time my client came back and they would start the story with, you never guess what happened. <laughs> you know, and it's one of the reasons why I just love angels and I think that's why we connect so much because we can just feel that angel vibes off each other and you know and it is they they are just the best partnership for life you know oh yeah 
they are they are just they help with everything i always say they they give you the inner strength but they give you the real practical stuff as well and you know they're brilliant at helping you manifest whether it's a personal thing or a, a business thing but you have something exciting don't you um at the moment within your business that's starting with your cards Yes, so I have got a couple of, um, so I'm a published author of several books and my Divine Planning Abundant Profits deck, which were all self-published, but la end of last year, we signed with a publishing house called Muse Oracle Press. So we have got two new titles coming out with them. And so we have an affirmation deck, which is called the Daily Light Affirmation. It's actually available on pre-order right now at the time of recording this. And we've got the Daily Light Gratitude Journal coming out as well. And we are beyond excited for both of them. The affirmations are 60 of my most tried, tested and loved affirmations. So I've used these with my clients. I've used these for myself. They have been road tested to the max. So they're not just you know, 60 affirmations I put plucked from the ether. These are 60 affirmations that have literally, um, if they were a car, they would be scraped up to death because I have road tested these to the max. And then the gratitude journal, um, I love the gratitude practice, but a lot of people just use what I call the basic gratitude practice, which is just to write your journal and it's very effective and it's really, really good. I'm so happy and grateful for, and then you fill in your blank. And if that's all you do for a gratitude practice, trust me, you are doing enough. It is awesome and it will shift things for you. But gratitude, she is just so much more. So I decided to create a gratitude journal that really took that practice to the max as well. Mm -hmm. So in the gratitude journal, we have five sections. Each section starts with a beautiful letter. Um, and the letter basically describes a little bit and gives you a real life example of how to use this. So we start the first part, the first part um, of the gratitude journal starts with having gratitude for the past. Gratitude for your past can alchemize the most bitter experiences that you've had. 100%. Because that strength that you might be so proud of today was probably hard fought because you went through something really terrible and really, really gnarly. And if we can, we can't sit there and be happy that we're strong today by not acknowledging what made us strong in the first place. And even if that was a horrible experience, we can look back and say, I'm grateful for the lessons that I learned. I'm grateful for the juice that I was able to extract from that negative situation in my life. And that alchemizes that situation because things in our past, when they were emotionally charged, if you imagine you've got at the top of your head, you've got your crown chakra, your energy is coming in through your crown. And now if you are fully grounded and fully rooted in your present moment, you will have 100% energy to use in your present moment. And that's what's going to make you the most powerful energy on the planet, right? But a lot of us have energy going lots of different directions. So one of the directions that energy can go is into the past. Now, there is no power in the past. So the minute that your energy that comes in starts siphoning off to the past because you've got emotionally charged past things, it's like your battery's leaking. And now you've got maybe like 60% energy because 40% went off to the past. But we're not done because some of our energy comes in through. So 40% is now off to the past. And then we worry about the future. Now there's no power in the future because it's not happened yet. So there's no power there at all. So now let's say that, um, you know, 25% energy goes to the worries of the future, right? So we've got 40% in the past, we've got 25. Now we can see very clearly why an individual will feel exhausted by life because you're like, love, you're only running on 45% when you have the capacity to run at 100%, but the energies are siphoning off. What I love for gratitude is to be able to bring all of that together and bring that all together and consolidate it 
And when you do that, then you end up with 100% energy in your present moment. And gratitude is such a powerful energy for bringing you into that present moment. So we start with gratitude for the past. We move on to gratitude for the lessons that you've learned. We then move on to gratitude for the present moment. We then move on to gratitude for calling in because it's such a great tool for manifesting. You'll know that yourself. And then we finish the gratitude journal on gratitude reframe. So a quick example of a reframe is, oh my God, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm late, which actually siphons power out. Instead, you say, thank you so much for your patience. Yeah. And that keeps the power within you instead. And it's gratitude reframes are a really powerful thing. So that's how we finish that gratitude journal. So it's very different from like what else is out there at the moment. So I was so looking forward to the daily light hitting the shelves. They don't come out until May with Muse. And then Muse have a partner, distribution partner, Red Wheel Wiser, who are the second largest spiritual book publishers in the world. Um, and they come out, they launch on the 7th of August. Wow. It sounds like gratitude on steroids. It sounds great. It's it's going to be that's a good description of the daily like gratitude journal. Yeah. And the affirmations and also as well the journal, um, Steph over at Muse Oracle Press did like, it. it's probably going to be one of the prettiest journals you've ever owned. It's going to have gold edges inside its full color. And it's even got a satin ribbon to keep your place inside it and all hardback and the most exquisite graphics and then inside the gratitude journal as well you've got affirmations in there as well and beautiful quotes and it's a whole vibe <laughs> I can't wait to see it Joanna because you're right gratitude does take you right into the now doesn't it and that's it what brings it, you into the now yeah the power is you know you're right the past has no power and the future has no power unless exactly trainers. Um, yeah and that's what it does it drains us because we can't get it if we've got something that's emotionally charged sitting in our past it's it's literally sitting siphoning energy because only power is in the now so in order for something to have power from the past we have to kind of literally mainline it there which means because the only place that we can have power and get power is in the present moment, we have to mainline it from the present moment, which means that we diminish right, the right. present moment. Yeah. 100%. Well, I love talking to you. Um, I just love our conversations that we have on and offline. Um, <laughs> it's always good fun. Me too. But, um, I, you know, as we've been sitting here now, and obviously I want you to tell everyone um how they can contact you, where they can find you and stuff. But I've been sitting looking what's behind you. And I know that quite often we'll go, oh, I've got one of those. I'll share some of it. And you'll go, oh, I've got one. Or you'll share something. And I'll go, I've got one. <laughs> I can see on your your wings on your wall there to the left. And I'm thinking, oh, they're the same wings as I've got up here. And then I'm <laughs> your little bells behind you. And I'm like, I've got little bells over here on my dresser. Um, we oh, have that's so funny. Often. We really, really do. So yeah, I mean, there's been so many. I mean, we've even got a number plate that's like one letter different. And uh, so it's so crazy. And I used to have pink in my hair and you've obviously got all, all your beautiful colours in your hair. So it's, it's, it is so funny how many correlations there's been yeah. um, over the years. So yeah, if people are trying to find me, I'm super easy to find. I'm joannahunter.com. That's my website. And then I'm joannahunter.com. So instead of all one word, so it's just like joannahunter.com, but instead it's all one word. And that is what I am on every social media channel. So I've made it super easy for people to find me. So I'm that on Facebook. I'm that on um, Instagram. I'm that on TikTok and things like that. I tend to do different things on each of my social media channels. So TikTok's um, a good place for money. Uh, Instagram is a good place for healing. And then um, I always call Facebook the melting pot where everything is happening there. Oh, oh well, hopefully you'll come on again one day and we'll be able to natter. But we could um, talk about this stuff forever. It's been absolutely with absolutely you. and I would love to have you on our podcast as well that would be amazing Amanda so I look forward to that definitely well thank you for your time today Joanna bye for now
I hope you've enjoyed this episode. If so, please hit follow and share my message by sharing with your friends. It would be amazing if you can leave a review. All this will help and it activates a universal law of the more you give, the more you receive. So it's a win-win. You can find more good stuff between episodes over on social media. Just search The Angel Mystic on Facebook, Instagram or TikTok or check out the links in the show notes. I'd love for you to connect more over in my free group in Abundance Manifesting all on Facebook. Hope to see you there. Thank you.